Systems Spring Television. Ours it is. Here are the top stories of the news. EFCC arrests bank manager in Abuja for hoarding 29 million naira worth of new notes. APC presidential candidate Bola Tinubu promises to eliminate terrorists if elected. And uh, on the foreign scene, rescue efforts continue in southeast Turkey after yesterday's quake as death toll nears 5,000. Good afternoon and welcome to Spring News at 12 on Western Spring Television. My name is Tunde Ido. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arrested a bank operations manager in Abuja for hoarding 29 million naira worth of the new naira notes. The EFCC, in a statement, said an operations manager of a commercial bank in Abuja central area was yesterday arrested by operatives of the commission for refusing to load the automated teller machines of the bank, despite having 29 million naira of the redesigned notes in the branch vault. The agency noted that before he was whisked away for further questioning, the operatives ordered the loading of all the ATMs and the payment of the stipulated amount across the counter to the delight of the distraught customers. The FCC further assured that it will continue the operation across the nation until normalcy is restored to the banking system. The Federal Capital Territory High Court has stopped the Central Bank of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, and 27 commercial banks from suspending or interfering with the currency redesign. Terminal dates of February 10 or issue any directive contrary to the set date. In a motion by five political parties, the court also granted an order directing the chief executive officers of the banks to show cause why they should not be arrested and prosecuted for the financial sabotage of the country by illegally hoarding and not disbursing the new 200, 500, 1,000 Naira banknotes. President Buhari last year approved the redesign of the banknotes. The move has, however, created hardship among Nigerians who have struggled to lay hands on the new notes as the February 10th deadline for the currency swap inches closer. The national chairman of the Action Alliance, one of the five parties, Kenneth Udeze, in a news chat today, said the deadline already fixed by the Apex Bank must not be shifted. Um, less than 20, uh, 19 days to the election. Every political party in Nigeria is working hard to make sure they gather the necessary votes to win election. And um, anything that can deprive us of that, we have to make sure as politicians to make sure that we, it never holds. And what is going on, you know, in the polity is very, very, um, is very, very appalling. If you look at out of the 18 political parties, only one political party is against uh, the CBN policy, and. Uh, we looked at it and based on the, um, some of the permutations we have, because uh, just like the minister that just left your studio now, they keep talking about winning an election. It's not going to be as business as usual, because definitely APC is going to lose the election. A lot is going on the ground. We are working seriously between the PDP and the Labour Party, Action Alliance, name other political parties. It is either, it can be any other party, but not APC, because they have caused a lot of damage to the country. That's why we have to go to court. In the meantime, businesses and livelihoods in Nigeria are increasingly being impacted with long queues as a result of cash crunch and fuel scarcity amidst spiraling inflation. This report by Toby Sanusi chronicles the difficulties Nigerians have continued to face at this time. Frustration, exhaustion, anger and disappointment are captured on the faces of Nigerians in their struggle for cash availability. No thanks to the new Naira redesign policy. The ordeal of Monsurat Alakpata and others who have queued for cash withdrawal for over five hours at one of the banks in Oshobu, the Ashun state capital, corroborates the untold hardship many Nigerians have been subjected to. Everybody, 
Oko was back in your road back. I'm stressed for, you know, since morning we are here. I'm here since 4 o'clock. 4 a.m. in the morning, I'm here. And I'm number 400 since morning. I'm working. I have money in the bank. I didn't have access to my money. So, I feel like I have a TV after 6. I don't know what I'm doing. 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 According to the Central Bank of Nigeria, the scope of the currency redesign is to stem the tide of kidnapping, inflation, money counterfeiting, to boost cashless policy and the Naira among other issues. But consequently, Nigerians have had to pass through the needle to access the new Naira as many commercial banks reportedly owed new notes and in many cases limit cash withdrawals to certain amount. There may, however, be light at the end of the tunnel as President Muhammad Buhari last Friday promised to address the new Naira policy within seven days. From bank queues to queues at fueling stations, this is what Nigerians have had to grapple with for a couple of months now. A situation that has left businesses and livelihoods in shambles. As early as five in the morning, motorcycles, commercial buses and private cars queue up to get fuel in the country that is a major oil producer. Similarly, long queues in fueling stations have been on for over two months now, with no resolution yet from the federal government, who have shifted blames on the independent petrol marketers. These lengthy queues have been marred by quarrels, fights, heated arguments, among other provocations. Meanwhile, the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ipman, attributed the fuel scarcity to an availability of petroleum products and difficulty in accessing foreign exchange by marketers. Timothy Adeloye and some other fuel buyers who spoke to Western Spring Television decried the continued frustration of queuing for fuel. We passed a lot of stress before we, I can get the privilege to enter to this filling station. I was here about, uh, it's going to an hour that I spent before I was unable, able to enter to this filling station. Well, I've been here almost, and let's say, about uh, go, going, to, going to almost be 30, 30 minutes now. But I don't want to spend much on queue. That's why I want to play, I want to pass Dongu. So this Dongu, I'm going to pay 500 now before I pass this Dongu, so to enter the filling station to buy free. While it is yet uncertain when these chronicles of queues will subside in Nigeria, Nigerians now expect intervention from the federal government, which is not yet forthcoming, to stem the tide of lengthy queues in and outside of banking halls and fueling stations. From Western Spring Television, Toby Sanusi reporting. Ahead of the 2023 presidential election, the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Bola Tinubu, has promised to defeat and eliminate terrorists if elected in the forthcoming general elections. He also assured the Casina electorate of his readiness to cater for the children and widows of victims of the terrorist attacks in all parts of the country. Tinubu stated this yesterday during his party's presidential campaign rally in Casina, the home state of President Muhammad Buhari, where he met residents mourning the death of over 100 civilians killed by terrorists in the last four days. He also empathized with the victims and their families, promising to deal with the terrorists squarely. The, press, the president thanked the casino supporters for waiting four hours to... The presidential candidate thanked the casino supporters for waiting four hours to welcome the APC campaign team, urging them to mobilize their families to vote for the party to ensure continuity. We will promise one thing and many more that they will not, they will not win. The wicked shall perish. We will deal with them. We will definitely deal with them. No way. No way they will go scot free. No way. Children of those who are left as urbans, 
the wives of the widow or widower will be catered for. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has urged Kwara residents to show ethnic and religious sentiments as the general elections draw closer. He made the coming during the party's presidential rally at the Metropolitan Square in Ilorin, the Kwara state capital, on Monday. Obi also promised to tackle insecurity in the country and ensure peace in every part. This is as he called for patience over the central bank of Nigeria CBN's Nara swap policy which has caused outrage in several parts of the country. This year's election, they are going to come to you. And they will tell you to vote for them based on time. Please tell them you're hungry. Tell them you're unemployed. Tell them you're suffering. Not try to buy bread cheaper. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, has assured the people of Benue State that peace will return to their state if elected as president. The PDP flag bearer gave the assurance during the party's presidential campaign rally in the state, stating that he will bring insecurity to an end and ensure that there is peaceful coexistence between Fulani and Tif communities in the state. Mr. Atiku stated that the measures he will adopt to ensure that peace returns to the state it's for the Fulani and Thieves to sign a piece of card. The former vice president promised that people will freely go to farms without fear of losing their lives, reinforcing Benue's status as the food basket of the nation. In River State, the state police command has said the arrest of over 30 persons in Port Harcourt over the weekend was purely a criminal matter with no political undertone. There were reports that about 30 members of the Atiku support organizations were arrested by armed policemen during a meeting in the state capital. According to the spokesman of the organization, Victor Moses, some of those arrested were state and local government leaders of the group, alleging that the police operatives may have acted on the instructions of Governor Yusam Wike. However, in a statement yesterday, the state police spokesperson Grace Iringe Koko said the command on 5th February 2023 at about 1.30 p.m. arrested 32 persons from two hideouts in connection with suspected cult-related activities. Iringe Koko said the police in the state have been carrying out targeted raids of criminal hideouts because of the incident of court clashes that have been recorded lately. The PPRO also clarified that the arrest was not related to any political meeting, adding that those arrested were being profiled, with seven of them having already been released. To legal matters, the Kogi State High Court has committed the Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, ESCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa, to prison for disobeying a court order. The court also directed the Inspector General of Police to effect Bawa's arrest and remand him in Kuje prison for the next 14 days until he purges himself of contempt. Justice Rukaya Ayola of the State High Court, in his judgment yesterday, granted the application for committal to prison of the ESCC chairman for disobeying a court ruling delivered on November 30, 2022, wherein the EFCC was directed to produce the applicant in the case Ali Belu. Counsel to the applicant, Sul 
Sumaila Abbas had dragged Bawa to court for arresting and detaining Belu illegally, with the court ruling in his favor, only for the EFCC to arrange him for alleged money laundering three days after the ruling. The court had earlier asked the EFCC chairman to appear before it on January 18, 2022, to explain why he should not be jailed for flouting the order given on December 12, 2022, in a case filed by Ali Belu against EFCC and Bawa as the first and second respondent, respectively. In Imo State, lawyers and judges yesterday commenced a three-day strike over the killing of the magistrate in charge of Ejemekuru customary cards in Oguta local government area of the state in Naimeka, Ugboma. Mr. Ugboma was on Thursday afternoon shot dead by fleeing gunmen while presiding over a session in court. In a bid to express their anger over the magistrate's killing, the five branches of the Nigerian Bar Association in the state embarked on the strike. NBA chairman in Nowere, Ugo Chuku Alino, said the measure was taken to urge government to apprehend the killers of the magistrate and for the cult to be adequately protected. You're watching Spring News at 12 on Western Spring Television. We'll be right back after this break. Please stay with us. in slaves by which 12.5 million Africans were captured from their indigenous homelands and transported via the Atlantic to Europe and the Americas. The transatlantic slave, also known as triangular trade, was the worst form of man's inhumanity to man and the most costly in human life of all long-distance global migrations. Hundreds of Africans chained tightly to plank beds in the belly of slave ships in horrific conditions were transported via the Atlantic and stripped of all human dignity on arrival in Europe and America. It is the greatest crime the Caucasians committed against the black race. It is impossible to discuss the transatlantic slave trade without a copious reference to impoverishment and underdevelopment of Africa and its peoples. The triangular trade left the continent in ruins. Western Springer Television identifies transatlantic slip trade as a watershed event in history. Thank you for staying with us. In business news, energy giant BP has reported record annual profits after oil and gas prices surged last year following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The company's profit more than doubled to $27.7 billion in 2022, compared with $12.8 billion the year before. Other energy firms have seen similar rises, with Shell reporting record earnings of nearly $40 billion last week. The profits have led to calls for energy firms to pay more tax, as many households struggle with rising bills. BP boss Bernard Loney said the British company was helping to provide the energy the world needs and investing in the transition to green energy. Still in business, plane maker Boeing plans to cut about 2,000 jobs in finance and human resources this year as it focuses on engineering and manufacturing. The move comes as the company puts more of its resources into products, services and technology development. It will outsource some of the roles of Tata Consultant Services, a unit of one of India's largest conglomerates. Boeing has faced a number of issues in recent years, including the grounding of its 737 MAX after two fatal crashes. On the foreign scene, rescuers are battling heavy rains and snow as they race against the clock to find survivors of a devastating earthquake in southeast Turkey. 
More than 4,800 people were killed in 15,000 and 15,000 were injured in Turkey and over the border in Syria when the quake struck in the early hours of yesterday. Turkey's disaster agency says more than 3,381 people were killed in Turkey alone after the first quake and more than 1,500 people are reported to have died in Syria. The World Health Organization has warned that the toll may rise dramatically as, res as rescuers find more victims. Countries, including the United States and South Korea, are sending aid after Turkey issued an international appeal for help. <laughs> Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has arrived in Mali for talks with the military leadership of the country. Mr. Lavrov, who was in Iraq yesterday, was welcomed on arrival by his counterpart, Abdullah Diop, and did not make any statement to journalists. The Russian minister is expected to hold talks with the country's interim president, Asimi Goita, and the foreign affairs minister. The Russian news agency, TASS, said the two sides will discuss issues of cooperation, including military ties and the shipment of Russian grain fertilizers and oil products to Mali. The talks will also touch on issues about the war in Ukraine and on tackling terrorism in the Sahel region. This is Mr. Lavrov's second trip to Africa in two weeks after touring South Africa, Angola, Etswani, and Eritrea in January. In the United States, officials say a suspected Chinese surveillance balloon that was shot down off the U.S. coast was about 200 feet tall and carrying an airliner sized load. At a briefing, U.S. defense official General Glenn Varick Set the size and makeup of the object informed the decision not to shoot it down while it was over land. The U.S. is still working to recover debris off the coast of South Carolina, but remnants of the object have been collected from a roughly 1,500 meter sized area. The U.S. believes the object is a spy balloon, but China says it is a weather monitoring device blown astray. In talking sports, Ghanaian winger Kristen Atsu has been pulled from the rubble of a building in the Turkish city of Haiti with injuries. His manager, Mustafa Ozat, confirmed this to Turkish radio. The former Newcastle player, now with Turkish side Hataya Spor, was trapped after the earthquake that killed more than 4,800 people in Turkey and Syria yesterday. Hatay was one of the cities closest to the epicenter of the quake and has suffered extensive damage. The club's sporting director, Tana Savot, remains in the collapsed building. And to boxing, British Nigerian heavyweight Anthony Joshua will fight Germany Franklin on the 1st of April at the O2 Arena in London. The 33-year-old who lost back-to-back -back fights to world champion Alexander Usyk will be seeking a first win since beating Kubrat Pulev in 2020. Franklin was beaten on points by Britain Dillian White in November, marking the first loss in 22 fights for the 29-year-old American. Joshua, a two-time world champion, lost by split decision as he sought to recapture the unified heavyweight title from Usyk in August. Before we end the news, here is a recap of our top stories. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arrested a bank operations manager in Abuja for holding 29 million naira worth of new naira note. Ahead of the 2023 presidential election, the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Bola Tinubu, has promised to defeat and eliminate terrorists if elected in the forthcoming general election. On the foreign scene, rescuers are battling heavy rain and snow as they race against the clock to find survivors of a devastating earthquake in southeast Turkey. You can follow us on our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Western Spring Television. You can also watch us live on our YouTube channel 
at Western Spring Television. That ends Spring News at 12. On behalf of the entire transmission team, I am Sunday Ido. Good afternoon.